call the meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone to the September 14th, 2021, regularly scheduled for the City Council meeting and then Linda Hart Love. Linda J. Hart Love, Council Chambers, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, the Lord's Prayer, and welcome silence for those serving and protecting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My reports were long in the past. Well, you're going to tag team event tonight. I'd like to introduce everyone to Quinn Babcock, the mayor of the village of Oak Harbor. We'll get back to him in just, just a moment. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Fire Chief Kent Johnson for organizing the 911 ceremony that was held uh, this past Saturday at the Portland Fire Station. Obviously, members of the Portland Fire Department, Police Department, Ottawa County Sheriff's Office, Ohio State Highway Patrol, Customs and Border Protection. Um, some of our military friends from Camp Perry, uh, some commissioners, some council members, township trustees, and the community were in attendance. Um, it was a very nice uh, brief, as, as Kent wanted it to be, ceremony. So thank you for those that attended. Um, the Boy Scout event this past weekend was spectacular. They had over 600 scouts and leaders camped out at Waterworks Park. Um, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, a couple of the merchants downtown, the kids had the opportunity to get downtown. They were, merchants were, were overwhelmed at how polite the kids were. The park was in great condition uh, upon their departure. Uh, you know, the, the, the organizers of Troop 360, the uh, troop leaders, uh, Kim Oxter, uh, Dave Barth, Corbin Carpenter, Steve Nellett, and a few others did, did a wonderful job. Had an opportunity to, to speak as well with three different groups. And, and there were folks, not just in Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and that state up north, all over that, that came into uh, the, the Port Clinton area. This typically has happened over at South Bass Island at Perry's Victory and International Peace Memorial. The groups I spoke with and the feedback I received from the folks from 360, 
everyone loved it here in Fort Clinton. More to do, still gave the kids the opportunity to go over to Putin Bay and see the sites over there, but with the beach, the playground, the access to, to downtown without having to deal with some of the Putin Bay issues. Um, informally, this may be a, a, an annual thing here in, in Fort Clinton the weekend after Labor Day weekend. So I was very excited to, to see that, that happen and hopefully continue. If you remember, we had the honk about, we trained after COVID restrictions were released, we transferred that to a third Thursday car show. Uh, that's this week, uh, this week, Thursday from five to eight in the 200 block of Madison Street. So just around five o'clock, that portion of, of Madison will be blocked off. Um, very much looking forward to, to that again. It was it's just the talent of the local car folks around here is, is incredible. Mr. Babcock, if you have the classic car, you're welcome to bring it over as well. Council, you should have received an email requesting, uh, no, not that email, the other email. <laughs> you, you should have received an email inviting you to an event on October 21st, sponsored by the, uh, this, uh, the Ability Center of Greater Toledo. You may recall this past spring, we accepted some funds to build an accessible ramp and to place two Moby mats on our beach. Part of the, the agreement was to have a disability awareness training session that will take place at the a la carte cafe on noon on the 21st and that's open to elected officials and department supervisors. Um, please RSVP to Mrs. Ostheimer uh, by that Tuesday prior so we, we have a good head count and know what to, uh, what to expect there. Um, brush pickup started this Monday. Uh, there was a lot out there. Uh, the plan starting on the west end of the, the town hitting the north-south roads uh, this morning at about 8.30 I saw the group heading north on Madison Street, so they had made it about halfway. Once they do the north-south, they'll do the east-west. Uh, the plan was to have everything done by tomorrow, but it may be Thursday before everything is taken care of. Uh, the wetlands project is progressing well. Uh, they extended the planting period until this week. Um, very soon you'll see the temporary fence going around uh, with some type of covering over top to protect those uh, buds and allow them to, to do what they need to do to, to grow healthy um, so that that'll continue for another couple of years uh, glad to see that working the, the walkway project is well underway I know mr. Trolley was talking about his daily trips down there um, you'll see a diver in the water either tomorrow or Thursday to specifically identify where the county's water intake is so we don't have any accidents as they start putting the pilings in mr. Colston just informed me that that process will start uh, tomorrow so that, that's exciting, and again, hopefully that concludes, that, that will be concluded uh, before Memorial Day weekend of, of next year. On Tuesday, October 12th, which is the first council meeting in the month of October, Pogemeyer Design Group will be here to give everyone an update on the funding and financing patterns for the infrastructure project. Um, Mr. Hatfield and Mr. Velo heard this presentation. Some things have been added to that. Obviously, you took some action last week. Uh, to allow us to go after a 13th funding source for that $27 million project. And then that following Thursday, the 14th, at also at 6 p.m. at the Performing Arts Center, the public is welcome to hear that same presentation with a, probably a little bit more information, bringing everybody up to speed on how this infrastructure project started, how it went from one big project to two small. You guys know the story, so I'm not gonna go over it with you. But that, that will be on the 14th of October at the PAC at six. Very excited, and I want to thank the Jet Express and the listening room here in Port Clinton. Crystal Power Sox is coming to town for a performance this coming Saturday. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce made arrangements for the rental of uh, 31 picnic tables in the Mom area. Those have sold out. They've added more, um, and will continue to add more until we run out of picnic tables or space. So that, that's very, very exciting. At some point, the picnic tables will stop as you move north on Madison Street. There'll be a, 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 the bike racks that you see in front of the stage will be moved to the back of the picnic tables. And then that back area between that fence and, and Parish Street will be open for anyone to bring a lawn chair. So, you know, it's open to the public. You don't have to pay the hundred bucks if you want to bring the lawn chair. We're just also asking that nobody sit or stand on the, uh, on the sidewalks. We need to keep those open for emergency purposes. But again, it's very exciting to have her in town and I understand the, the young fellow that's opening before her, and I, his name escapes me, is a big up-and-comer as well in the Nashville, Nashville music scene. So it, it should be very, very exciting this Saturday night. Um, as I mentioned, Mayor Babcock is here. 
uh, because his, his brainchild, uh, like to talk to you a little bit about a partnership between the city of Port Clinton and the village of Oak Harbor. Um, just a little bit of background here. In Oak Harbor, they've been working on a waterfront, riverfront development, uh, walkway, amphitheater, you've heard that somewhere else before. Um, several years ago, the village of, of Oak Harbor and the Oak Harbor Development Group uh, partnered. The Oak Harbor Development Group are the folks that actually own that land right there. Um, applied for some capital budget funds, received half of what they're asking for and have started their, their, their process. They're going to continue and make an, another capital budget request to finish the process, which includes that amphitheater portion. At that same time, the city of Port Clinton has been talking with the Greater Port Clinton Area Arts Council about also making a state capital budget request for the art garage. Mr. Babcock sits on that board of directors and kind of thought, hmm, let's put these two groups together and, and here's why. If we were to apply and if he were to apply, both DJ Swearingen and Therese Gavarone, our state rep and state senator, would have to review all the projects presented in their jurisdiction. Only one would move forward. Would it be his or would it be ours? And there's a connection there because once the amphitheater is built, the Greater Port Clinton Area Arts Council, through TAG, would be the entity charged with managing their amphitheater and getting the entertainment down there. By partnering, putting the City of Port Clinton, the Village of Oak Harbor, the Greater Port Clinton Area Arts Council, and the Oak Harbor Development Group all together, it lessens the burden on Senator Gavarone and DJ Swearingen it helps both communities, and it's an easier sell once they go out to, to sell our idea to their fellow senators and, and congressmen and women. There are some internal issues between the, the two entities that need to be worked out. If we apply for this much money and only get this much money, who gets what portion? We're working on a, something called a, a memorandum of understanding on that. Um, and feel free to jump in at any time. I invited you over here. <laughs> um, so we're, we're here right now just to bring this to your attention. It, it's critical that if you have any objections to this, you state them now or in the very near future because once we get this ball working and moving, if there is an objection out there, that's the very first thing, the number one thing that would kill a project like this. The, the, Congress people and the senators don't want to be associated with any type of controversy. To us, and to the Greater Port Clinton Area Arts Council and the Oak Harbor Development Group, it seems like a win-win-win. We've had meetings with both of those groups and they're on board. The other day, Mayor Babcock spoke with his council, much like we're doing here, probably just a little more eloquently, um, and they were very much on board. Mr. Hatfield, Mr. Bilo, um, Mr. Colston and uh, you were there, uh, Mayor Babcock, and I met with the uh, Arts Council. Uh, they're they're very much on board and, and love the idea. Um, he's looking at a half a million dollar request ish, ish, and the Greater Port Clinton Arts Council is between a one two and a one five million dollar request. Um, their their end product for the Arts Council is one point five, um, and that's kind of where where we stand right now. Anything I forgot, neglected, you know, butchered? I put a lot of there. Or really well. I would just add that I think you know any uh, any potential collaboration like this starts with uh, you know it's a combination of a bit of a joint vision and an opportunity, and I think that's exactly what we have here. And why sort of I uh, talked to Mayor Snyder about it is you know I think at the end of the day, uh, what the people of Portland want, and the leadership of Portland want, is the same thing that the people and leadership of Oak Harbor want. You know. We want uh, thriving small businesses, we want robust public spaces that have art and music and uh, recreational opportunities that are uh, open to everyone, both in terms of cost and you know, physical accessibility. Um, this is something that everybody wants. And likewise, so there, that joint vision is there, and that's something we can present very cohesively to an uh, opportunity like the state capital budget. And likewise, that opportunity there is that we have a couple of very well fleshed out projects. You know, a lot of times you have you have money and maybe a vision, but not a fleshed out project. <laughs> but we only have all three in this case, and um, this really is particular opportunity. You know, if you're not familiar with the capital budget, 
know, it's different than a grant because a grant, you know, you write an application, essentially, you know, uh, government officials or bureaucrats or somebody, uh, subject matter experts, people like this who are very smart review it. Um, you know, we have no such challenge in this case. We have a different challenge, which is we have to sell legislators on it. That's a lot of public support, and it's a good idea, and something that fits really well with the communities that they represent. Um, and it allows uh, for a, you to succeed in getting funding for a little bit of different problems. And I think, again, the vision that we have sells, the projects that we have under that vision sell, and I, and I think it makes for a very clean presentation. And I think it fits very well with the sort of uh, work that Port Clinton has been doing with the infrastructure project and with things are really, at least how it looks, you know, from outside the city limits, you know, from Oak Harbor, is you're really trying to do work that the community values and you're trying to bring them along with you and build awareness and build um, understanding of uh, the whole vision for the community. And this is something that I think fits right in there. Um, We've had conversations with both Senator Gavron and uh, Representative Swearingen at different times. Um, my meeting with those two entities was when his predecessor was here um, and the art garage this is still when it was still in the conceptual form was right in the wheelhouse of the capital budget um, on the opposite side of that once the funds are allocated they're channel channeled through a state agency and there's still some discussion as to what state agency our idea will funnel through, but the impression I got from conversations is it's a worthwhile project. We don't have to worry about where the money gets funneled through. It'll get funneled through if it's a worthwhile project. So um, as we move forward, there may be some action that this council will have to take to allow us in Port Clinton to move forward just as well as in Oak Harbor to, to move forward. So we want to keep you in the loop as to what's in the loop. <laughs> Any? No, I think that's totally fair. I would, the only thing I would maybe, uh, you know, clarify is the Bill Carver Development Group that's going to go around. That is a nonprofit organization. Um, and it's one of our key community partners that helped us advance uh, this previous, uh, our previous success in the capital budget. Um, so that's not, you know, uh, a real estate thing. investment firm or something, right? It's a, it's a nonprofit community development agency. Um, and like I was looking at, and I wouldn't, I, I just would just wouldn't tie us to the $500,000. We're looking at what the appropriate amount is to store glass. And what we have project estimates from before COVID, and now they're all you know, thrown out the window to start over. Um, so, by the way, I think I clarified just for the state of the fact, but now I think it's still not all very well. Mr. Mayor, what's the time frame on, on this? What are you looking at? Ten years. So the budget itself will be passed in February or March of uh, 2022. The traditional deadline to have your uh, your paper sort of grant application style requests to the legislature is January 1. Um, so, and this is pretty, I think we're pretty on a good timeline. We started before maybe we started a month earlier, but we did start a month earlier. We just had to build a good collaboration to get to this point. Um, so it's, it the largely looks like our, for the next several months, what we would be doing is you know finalizing the paperwork, um, meeting with the legislators to make sure they're on board, they don't have any substantial concerns, and then really doing an aggressive, essentially PR campaign to get letters of support and put it at the top of the legislators' minds so that we maximize the likelihood of funding. When O'Carver applied for the, the first portion, uh, they had a thousand, yes, a thousand letters of support in a village of twenty three hundred. Twenty yeah, come on. Give me <laughs> <laughs> we have to get this completed though by the football game because after that. <laughs> um, Anyone else have any questions? Mayor Snyder, um, back when you first briefed me on this idea, I think shortly after that meeting, you had sent an email to both Rep. Swearingen and the state and Senator Gabron to confirm the viability of this joint pathway. Did you receive a response to that? From Senator Gavron, yes. And she was right about, she remembered the project from our conversation that we had in the, the original meeting room, and it seemed to be right in the wheelhouse. So I think you had asked her, or what I was urging you to do is to have her people, her staff, verify with the committee Fine. staff that the pathway is actually viable, and that the Arts Garage project, which is my understanding was just a complete renovation, not construction, right? Correct. Renovation would that all 
elements of that would be uh, determined to be eligible at least before moving forward. So, have you heard anything further on that? Not, not that specific, just in general terms that it's right, again, right in the wheelhouse, I think is one of the terms she used on that phone conversation. Typically, the key elements are, um, so they really, the, the, where people get on the wrong start with the capital budget is the capital budget is financed by bond debt issued by the state of Ohio. So therefore, anything you spend the money on has to be permanent improvements owned by a government agency. Or you know, you can get like some 30-year use contract to sort of substitute it if you need to. But um, that's usually the key handoff. Um, in this case, uh, I think it, it satisfies the most common issues. And I don't, I don't see any others, but. I would just urge everybody to run all traps early so you're not, so for example, the law director and the auditors aren't spinning their wheels to meet a deadline, right? And we're not sure that it's uh, incredibly viable, but look forward to supporting it. So, thank you. And these partnerships between communities have happened before, just not necessarily in this in this fashion. Uh, Mayor Babcock talked about it, a couple of different uh, law enforcement jurisdictions that went together. Yeah. You know, recently, for example, Firelands, as I recall, the Erie County Sheriff's Office put a facility at Firelands Community, whatever the title is, um, college, and so that's one where they need joint use that facility. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I would say the most frequent is joint use facilities. Um, so it's not. Um, and I think the nice thing about the capital budget is as long as you have your legislators on board and you clear the legislative hurdle, um, Everybody else falls in. then at the end of the day, what you receive is not a, you know, a grant, funded grant request. You receive a line item in the state budget that says the state legislator says we're going to fund this, and then the bureaucrats have to figure it out. Um, and that's where they say, oh, does it go under an MR? Does it go under the facilities? Mayor, is there a limit as to how much you can ask for? Oh. He, he's very much more. Person, there. I there is <laughs> much we can ask no, there's not a set limit. Um, Typic, how we went through the process last time that I would see doing something similar is we sort of we said, hey, look, legislators, this is our vision. It involves you know the Oak Harbor Riverfront sort of entire development. It's a two million dollar vision as of 2018. Um, and so we said, this is what we're looking at. How much should we ask for? What do you think a good amount to put in is? And you sort of help them. Let them guide you through that process. Because the end of the day, if you're successful, they're the ones pushing for your project. Um, so there's no limit. And, and when they told us, "What is asked for the whole thing, and we'll see what we get from that," right? And we ended up with five hundred thousand. Um, so, which is five hundred thousand dollars of free, no strings attached money, essentially. Um, and do we have an idea as to what we're going to be asking for? The, it, it's again, it's it's flown through us, but it's the art garage that's asking, and they're they're going back between the one point two and one point five. Again, looking at what the legislature feel is a realistic idea and what their ultimate goals are, <coughs> what their funding streams on other avenues are. So the, with the art garage, it's it's not just the capital budget that's going to be funding right. their, their renovation. And so does that include then the amphitheater or is that? Separate. So then it's gonna be 1.5 plus, plus whatever. 500, so like Yeah, I think at the end, Again, we're not the legislators' guys, right. yeah. but I think at the end of the day, we'll say, say we want a million, say you guys want a million, two, five, or whatever the numbers end up to be. Um, we'll probably just make that full request, and then we'll have an agreement to say if there's, you know, say we're going to split it 50 50 if we, you know, if you nobody know, gets all the money they want, then we'll split it 50 50, and you know, that's, I think, how it'd be worked out. But that's how we can work out. <laughs> okay. Madam President, if there's no other questions, that, that concludes my report. Thank you. Well, Madam President, I have a couple of additional questions. Um, you mentioned the violence plantings. I had a uh, outreach from a constituent who lives on Perry Street concerned about the height of some of the plantings, which we've heard before. Uh, can you comment on that and what next steps might be? And how the height deals with the, how the height currently and in the future aligns with the reform? I've had conversations with uh, the law director, Dean and I have spoke to that subject, the plantings, and she probably can explain it better than me. But the one that I was concerned, we're going to have a fence going around that whole area, which everybody knows, I think, by now, all the way around the marsh. It'll be basically your normal snow fence, uh, and that will be over three foot tall. That's a temporary obstruction, Dean, and correct me if I'm wrong. 
and the plants, uh, you could probably give your definition because we've had this discussion <laughs> a lot. I'll let her comment on the planning part. Go ahead. So I don't have my paperwork in front of me, but I believe the last time I looked, it's not all plantings that are three feet. It's shrubbery. So it's any type of like bushes or shrubs that cannot be over three feet tall. So if, if there is, um, I know that when we spoke with the wetlands, we're talking about some native grass, things like that. There is a restriction on that. I know that the person who keeps calling believes in their mind that anything that's planted is not to be over three feet tall, but that is not what the deed covenant says. Um, and, you know, we can look at that all day long. And, you know, um, they believe, they have a very sad definition of the mind and that's not the definition of the um, So when we spoke with the wetlands, um, people who were going in, um, they're very aware of the three feet. They're very aware. They're, they're going to try very hard to stay within that. They're trying to find um, plants um, that are with, that are native to the area that will do well in the area. So we should have some um, a good outlook for that. Um, they're very aware of the individual as well. So they know he's contacted them as well um, with his concerns. With regards to the fence, um, there's two different documents that go against each other and the documents that we signed with the wetlands basically states that any temporary structures, any temporary works, any temporary things that are going on that promotes the wetlands project will continue even if it does go against the restrictions because it's in furtherance of the wetlands project. And if we do not follow those temporary um, instructions from the wetlands, um, we can violate the contract and they can take the money and leave. Um, so we need to follow whatever it is. That fence will have to go up. It will upset that individual, um, but we're bound, we're bound by what we're told to do by the Army, Army Corps of Engineers. So that's kind of where we're at. So I don't know if we're speaking about the same individual or not, but do both of you believe there's awareness of all the property? owners along that stretch that the fence is going up oh, yeah. uh, and all that. I know Ms. Shanker and I, the one that we're really, that really has called and texted us, we have both communicated that a fence was going up. I did, so did you, Dean. If I, I don't want to speak oh, yeah. for you, but, but I saw your email, so I know we both have done that. There, there are going to be some people that get mad about it. There's no question about it. It's probably going to be up for a year's time. And it is what it is at that point. And uh, that's why I went to the legal department to make sure that we were correct in our, what we thought. And Dina says we certainly are on a temporary fence yeah. because of the instructions from the grant or the money that we got for this project. And we, um do not follow what the Army Corps of Engineers wants us to do, we can jeopardize the project. Yeah. So, we, I mean, we have to follow it and write in, in the restrictions from the Army Corps of Engineers and their guidelines. I mean, it's spelled out. It, it does go against the, the, the deed um, covenants that they have. So, it's we are within our rights to have that fence up. It's going to upset the people, but um, unfortunately, if that fence does not go up and if they don't put that covering up, um, those plants are never going to take root. The seedlings are never going to take root. It's never going to happen. Um, and if, say, if more sand gets in there, they're going to have to take the sand out again. Um, it's just going to be a mess. We're just going to keep filling it back up, having to get the sand out. So we have to have this fence in there. We have to have the coverings in there. They have to do what they need to do in order to once and for all get these uh, plants so we can get it to go forward. And Mr. Bilo, there probably will be fence up as early as this week on the easternmost side, on the back side for the sand because of some of the winds they anticipate so it doesn't fill in, help fill in, they think. They want to stand and put a double fence back there to try to catch, you know, like a catch and catch it that way. So that's part of what they uh, told uh, Lucas Johnson. So we probably, it won't be the whole thing, but it'll be that stretch behind the northernmost side behind that new wetland. So just so you guys know that's coming. Yeah. And there was the fence that was um, up on the beach side throughout the winter. And I really think there were only two people that complained. Correct. There were two people that complained about that. So, I mean, as far as the people who live on Perry Street, <coughs> I don't think as far as complaining, <coughs> it's minimal. Thank you both. You're welcome. On the Crystal Bowersocks event, Mayor Snyder, can you talk? The Jet Express sponsorship includes what? Naming rights and a check to pay for the performance. 
and then the the hundred dollars for the tables go to what? It goes back into the Main Street Fund to help continue the activities at Mom. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, auditor's report. Okay. Come on. Uh, we have bid and dock taxes. They're very high compared to last year, and I think you should all know that Sandy, our clerk, is mainly responsible for that, but she has really worked hard at it. Uh, bed taxes to date, $175,430. Sixty-four cents. Dock taxes to date, twenty-eight thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars and ninety-six cents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Walter. Nothing to say, Madam President. Thank you. So, Mr. Colston. Since the mayor took almost all of it today, and Mr. Velo okay. finished me off on the wetlands. <laughs> uh, now, this the only thing about the pier is they'll be starting to dry pilings uh, probably this week, as the mayor stated. So you're going to hear a lot of banging. So if your constituents call you, it will be very, very loud in that vicinity. So make sure of that. Also, I'll give you a report on the H2O. We're at 67. And that's because a couple of them had dropped out. People had, had one passed away and somebody had sold their house and stuff. So we have added, I think the last one was added on 831. So we're at 67. Um, the complaints or the questions even, there's only was one, two, five. One is a continuous one that um, puts, all, puts extortion money on the bottom check line of this uh, thing every month that he sends it in. Um, one on the me memo line said not happy. Um, Mr. Brillo, we'll talk about another one. What are we getting into? I guess I can put it out in public. People are putting their house, they own the house, they're putting it in their ch children's name because they're getting older and don't want to lose that house. How do we want to handle that kind of situation? So that's something that when we have our meeting, I just want to bring it up to you um, of what, how do we want us to handle that situation. That's a different, unique situation. Miss Phillips is going to be signing over her house to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you'd still like to get that deal? I'll take it with or without the waiver. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with that, I'm done. <laughs> that was good, Mr. Bill. I appreciate that. I didn't laugh. Okay, um, any other questions for Mr. Colston? <laughs> Mr. Colston, oh. the pilings that are going in, once the project is finished, will essentially look like North Jefferson Street where there's a little step up it's to gonna, the top uh, of the piling and then the water. Yeah. Like or canopy. I, and I, I cannot answer that a whole 100%. I just met up there tonight with them and I'll have a better answer in the morning um, because there's some wooden planking that, that's in the river right there. So we are bringing the pilings a little bit to the east, let's call it, it away from the water. So that'll be filled between that and that. And you all know that the, the walkway is in some spots, you know, four foot higher than what the, the pavement is out there. So um, I, I can't give you a definite answer on that, but that's what we were talking about tonight at 4, 4 430 today. So, I had Mannequin Smith down here, and I had DGL, who is our construction management on this job. So tomorrow by tomorrow morning, I should have an answer to tell you exactly what's going on there. What he's trying to say is they found the original correct wooden planks that were installed in the 1880s. Wow. Yeah. So they do not want to mess they with that. They they were that. there. <laughs> they did not want to mess with that, so they're bringing it back to the east towards land. Let's just say it that way. And they'll dig there, and then they have to fill in between that and the pilings, obviously. Where we're talking about are we shifting the walkway a little bit and you know i kind of brought up that i need to figure that out because we got the gangplanks to get to the docks that's down the road thing that's something i got to deal with later so but that's where we're at with that project thanks for asking that question thank you excuse thank me madam president yes unless anyone has any other questions about the the proposed idea here <coughs> i will open it up to mayor babcock to go back to carver you're welcome to say so <laughs> I appreciate it. I might try to make another meeting, otherwise I would say. Thank you very much. Yes, appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Mr. Bilo Finance. Thank you, Madam President. Board minutes 23 and 21. The finance committee recommended on August 23rd adoption on the third reading. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, economic and community development. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Environment and public works. Mrs. Hickman. Nothing tonight. Madam President. Safety services. Ms. Phillips. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Arts and culture. Ms. Gillen. Nothing tonight. Madam President. Thank you. Um, council listed under correspondence is the Port Button Architectural Review Board, June 24, 2021. Minutes. Port Button Planning Commission, August 12, 2021. <coughs> August 24, 2021. Meeting minutes. Ohio Division of Liquor Control Application for Change of LLC. And membership interest, Celio Grande LLC to D DBA, Rosie's Bar and Grill, Port Button. Council wish to take any action as to the correspondence this evening? Madam President. Mr. Bilo. And on the <coughs> Ohio Division of Liquor Control pertaining to Rosie's Bar and Grill, I move the way the Council's right to object to the hearing. Thank you. I have a second. I second that. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Any discussion? Further discussion? <coughs> okay, I have a motion by Mr. Bilo, second by Mr. Troy to waive the required hearing um, as to the liquor permits for. Cielo Grande, LLC, VA, Rosemary Would the clerk please call the roll? Roseanne Hickman? Yes. Pat Hobbs? Yes. Jay Bilo? Yes. Beth Gilman? Yes. Mrs. Voting? Yes. Jerry Trolley? Yes. Mark Phillips? Yes. Thank you. The question carries 7 0. Does Council wish to take any further action as to the correspondence this evening? Madam President, I accept the correspondence. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Mrs. Hickman? Further discussion? There's a motion by Ms. Phillips to approve the correspondence as stated. Seconded by Ms. Phillips. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Move on to readings of ordinances and resolutions. Um, we have a third reading of ordinance. 23-21, would the clerk please read by title summary only, ordinance 23-21. Ordinance number 23-21, an ordinance amending ordinance number 4-21 of the City of Port Clinton and adjusting accounts within the City of Port Clinton. Thank you. Does Council wish to take any action as to ordinance 23-21 this evening? Madam President. Mr. Bilo. I move to approve ordinance 23-21. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Trolley. Any further discussion? Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Bilo to adopt ordinance 23-21, seconded by Mr. Trolley. Will the clerk please call the roll? Jerry Trolley? Yes. Gay Bilo? Yes. Beth Gilman? Yes. Pat Hogan? Yes. Mrs. Bodian? Yes. Mark Phillips? Yes. Roseanne Hickman? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Motion carries 7-0, ordinance 23. Dash 21 is hereby adopted. We have no second readings. We move on to first readings. The clerk please read by title and summary only ordinance 24 21. Ordinance number 24 21, an ordinance amending ordinance number 4 21 of the City of Port Clinton and adjusting accounts within the City of Port Clinton. Thank you. Does Council wish to take any action as to ordinance 24 21 this evening? Seeing none. Ordinance 24-21 will be moved to a second reading on September 28, 2021 at the regular scheduled council meeting. Would the clerk please read by title and summary only resolution 21-9. Resolution 21-9, resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the budget commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. Thank you. Does council wish to take any action as to resolution 21-9? Seeing none, or, or resolution 21-9 will be moved to second reading on September 28, 2021 at the regular scheduled council meeting. We want to business from the floor. Uh, Ms. Hobbs? Nothing tonight, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Trolley. No, oh, okay. Mrs. Hickman? Nothing tonight, Madam President. Ms. Gilman? Nothing tonight, Madam President. Thank you. Ms. Lillian? Nothing tonight, Madam President. Ms. Phillips? Uh, I think we're doing rather well downtown. Things are busy. I do have to say, driving around at odd times. I 
see a lot of active people, so you must be doing something right. Right? You must be doing something right. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Mr. Vila. Thank you, Madam President. Hey, you, my time back to Ms. Phillips. It's really nice to see him here. He has just come back with his vacation. That's why he's coughing. This is the volume. It's nice, but it keeps cutting out with someone else. But that's all right. We're going to drop this up very good thing. Okay. See, seeing no further business, I want to entertain a motion to adjourn. Madam President, I move this August body adjourn. Thank you. A second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Diva. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose the same sign. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Go ahead.